Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes to, to uh, get started. Um, Annette, did you want to share that quick tip about um, preparing your, your cookie packs and, and your frosting? Sure, absolutely. So welcome everyone. We'll do uh, proper introductions as we get started, but I just want to welcome you to um, your cookie decorating activity. And all you're going to need is a pair of scissors. So if you haven't already, you can start to begin to open up your box, your sweet, delicious treats, and lay everything out on a flat surface. The only thing you're going to need is a pair of scissors and everything else is in your kit. So you can use your scissors to uh, cut your cookies open um, rather than tearing the plastic because you don't want to break the cookies. And then also with your little sprinkle sets, you can put them flat on your surface or you can put them in a little cup or a bowl. Um, but really looking forward to decorating with you. So again, just a pair of scissors is all you need. See you soon. All right, well, I think, I think it's uh, certainly time for us to get going. Welcome everyone. It's great to see so many folks uh, with us on this uh, Easter weekend, this special weekend this uh, most holy weekend to uh, come together as a university community for another one of our virtual events. So thank you all for being with us today. I'm, uh, I'm kind of like, uh, as most of us, I'm, I'm camped out in our uh, little kind of like makeshift office space for, for these uh, virtual, virtual work from home days while my uh, kids are out in the, the kitchen right now uh, getting themselves ready for cookie decorating. Um, these, uh, these holiday events, um, that have been run by the alumni office the last couple of years have, have really been something that, you know, we've taken a great deal of pride in and love being able to reconnect and engage with alumni and their families. So, um, you know, I, I give a tremendous amount of credit to Julia Olson, uh, Natalie DeGenero, and Alexa Brisson from our alumni engagement team at the university for just an incredible uh, effort this past year, putting together events like this and other types of virtual programming that allow alumni to come together. So maybe uh, we could give a kind of a virtual uh, round of applause or a thumbs up or some type of uh, emoji to recognize Julia, Alexa and Natalie for, for all their great work. Um, you know, normally at, at our annual Easter event, it, you know, there's an opportunity to really talk about, you know, life at Sacred Heart. Very few people, you know, from the external community that had a chance to be on campus this past year uh, but it's an opportunity just to share a couple things that that are going on. Um, we have been, um, we have had residential population both in the fall and, and again this spring. And kind of for, front and foremost on on everyone's mind is, you know, how is COVID impacting Sacred Heart and, you know, our students. Um, you know, we were proud to say that that Sacred Heart made it through about ten and a half of the twelve planned weeks on campus uh, prior to Thanksgiving. Um, it was, um, it was surreal to, to be honest, um, you know, a, a highly modified hybrid learning environment and, you know, everyone in a campus environment was asked to sacrifice for the greater good. And, and for the most part, you know, we avoided, um, you know, most of the surge, we, we did end up, um, you know, having some, some, some virus related issues that, that impacted, you know, um, letting students home a little bit before Thanksgiving, which was the pre-planned end. Uh, but by and large, it was a successful effort. It gave us the confidence that we could come back, you know, for the spring semester based on the learning. So we're now, you know, midway, we're actually in the home stretch of, of our spring semester, which will end in early May. So we have about five weeks left, um, including exams. And we're doing all right. Uh, I say that knock on wood, I'm knocking on the desk right now. Um, our infection levels are, are moderate um, and we're managing the campus environment. And we've been able to be able to create programming, you know, for students on campus to keep them engaged and to create value for, for being part of a, a family environment. Um, with that being said, life goes on at the university. So one of the things that people ask is, you know, what do what do the numbers look like? How many students are are enrolled? Has has COVID impacted the numbers? And uh, Sacred Heart was fortunate that we welcomed the largest incoming freshman class in the school's history this this past September, um, which was just a remarkable testament to the folks in student life and academics that that created an experience during that admissions process that made students want to be part of the Sacred Heart family. Um, as of right now, the, the important day for, for any kind of high school senior, you know, planning college is May 1. That is, um, 
not the universal date, but certainly um, a date that most colleges will work off of for deposits. And so Sacred Heart right now is trending exactly where we were this time last year. Um, so I guess in a, in a COVID pandemic world, there's, there's kind of no benchmark on how the next four weeks will go, but we certainly feel pretty confident where, with where we're at. Um, you know, expansion and development of campus has continued um, through this. And, and maybe some of you that follow us online have seen some of the news. Um, our residential campus is, is taking shape and we expect that that will be completed in the next 12 to 18 months. And really substantially, we continue to invest in, you know, the former GE headquarters, which is now West Campus. And just, um, just two weeks ago, we broke ground on the Martiri Family Arena, which will be a multi-purpose facility um, that will have kind of a primary purpose of supporting you know, all of our ice hockey, club ice hockey, figure skating programs, as well as a, a multiple purpose venue for university special events. So we're excited that's an 18 month build and, and we expect to um, you know, start competition in you know, January, 2022. So um, um, you know, we're, uh, we're moving quickly towards those dates. Um, anyway, it's, it's been great to, to have a chance to update folks. Um, you know, these events and alumni program are not made possible without the incredible support of our volunteer alumni association board of directors. They do a remarkable job and, and I am uh, proud to introduce our, our newly elected alumni board president, a graduate of the class of 1990, Rich Karoglian, who is with us today to just uh, share, share a couple welcoming words. Rich, if I could turn to you for a second. Can you hear me now? Uh, there you are, Rich. How are you doing? Uh, perfect. I'm doing well. Um, so I just want to um, wish everybody, you know, from the Alumni Association, you know, a happy Easter. Um, you know, welcome to this event. It's an event that we we do every year. Um, it's wonderfully, uh, you know, put on by by Todd, Julia, and, and the team, um, you know, in the alumni office. And you know, as the incoming president. I am, you know, just honored to be working with them. And, you know, I, I just want to thank all of you for your participation today. These events are, um, you know, a way for us to get the alumni community together, uh, you know, to welcome folks that maybe have never been on campus, or, you know, haven't been on campus in a while. And I know we're not on campus today, but virtually to participate in these events, they're important to, you know, to us as a school, us as an alumni community, um, you know, just to bring people together and just to, you know, say, you know, thank you and, you know, to, in some cases, to welcome folks back. So with that being said, I don't want to take up too much time. I just want to wish everybody a happy Easter um, and we look forward to seeing you back on campus um, when that time is, uh, when that time comes due. So uh, thank you, everybody, and enjoy the, uh, enjoy the festivities today. Great. Thanks for joining us, Rich. Well, I know everyone wants to jump into uh, cookie decorating. That's why we're here. So I'm going to flip it over to Natalie just to, uh, to transition the program. Nat? Thanks, Todd. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I am ready to start decorating cookies. So I am pleased to welcome Annette Conrad, who is the owner and lead decorator at Edible Impressions. She is the one that put together these wonderful kits for us. So Annette, the floor is all yours. Great, thank you so much. So what I'm gonna do, oh, and thank you, Natalie. It looks like she pinned my screen already. So welcome, welcome everyone. I'm really excited to be here with you. Wish we could be all together in person, but this is the next best thing. Um, so again, my name is Annette Conrad and I'm the owner and lead decorator and your virtual instructor today um, to give you a really fun activity. It's going to be cookie decorating if you haven't discovered already. So everybody was mailed in advance a cookie decorating kit. And the only thing that you're going to need for this activity today is a pair of scissors. Everything else is included in your kit. Um, before we get started, just a couple things really quick. 
I've been decorating for many, many years, and I'm going to give you a little sneak preview into the art of the decorated cookie. So what does that mean? Um, we're going to be working with sugar cookies and royal icing, and I'll explain what royal icing is in comparison to buttercream, but you're going to have a really fun activity and then a couple sweet treats in the end um, to share with your family or friends or just gobble up yourself. So um, we are located very quickly just north of downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I always say we are a women-owned, family-operated business with a small space but big reach. So we're really excited to work with you. My background has been um, working at a university, Marquette University. So I was just thrilled um, when I saw this opportunity. And so I welcome you. Happy Easter. Um, we're going to get right down to it. Um, you do not have to have any experience decorating. There's no wrong way to decorate a cookie. So just know that you're in good hands. Most of the time is going to be spent on this tabletop presentation for you so you can see up close and personal. And I could not be more delighted to be able to share with you how to decorate these really fun Easter cookies. And one final note here, two final notes here, is um, everything that you see here was designed with the contents from your kit, okay? So I'm not bringing in any of my fancy tools. I'm just gonna use what you have in your kit to make these gorgeous cookies. You can follow along with me or you can be creative and make your own designs. So like I said, there's no wrong way to decorate a cookie. Okay, last thing I wanna mention, I encourage you to um, show your video, show your screen, and unmute yourself if you have any questions or if you have comments. Really, this is your event, your event to be together. I'd love to hear the chatter to see <clears throat> how your experience is going. And then I'm going to decorate one of each of the four designs, but in between there'll be opportunity to share. So I'm not gonna call anybody out, but all you need to do is if you wanna share something, just say, I'd like to share or put your cookie to the camera. I will be glancing over in the gallery view to see how you guys are doing, but please take advantage of my, my knowledge, my expertise, and let's just have some fun decorating cookies. So um, just before I start, let's, uh, I'm gonna do a quick gallery view. Just give me a thumbs up for those that I can see. If you're ready to go, you can hear me okay. Excellent. And hello, families. I see lots of families out there. This is fantastic. So welcome, welcome. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with one cookie at a time. And I'm going to basically create the sample cookie that you see here and just introduce you real quick to what's in your kit. So you have eight big cookies, uh, four different designs. You've got this great little craft brush. And I'm gonna show you techniques to use this brush, both sides of the brush actually. And then you've got some great sprinkle sets. And so go ahead and just unwrap everything if you haven't already. I like to just spill everything out on the table and just be aware that these sprinkle sets, yours may vary ever so slightly because these are baker's choice and I'm always mixing these up with our kits, but I know you've got jelly beans and I know you've got some green sugar and some maybe some little non -perils. Um, You've got maybe these little black, um, little royal icing strips. We're gonna use those creatively on our uh, bunny rabbit. And then these great little icing carrots and eyeballs. These were actually made in our bake shop. So we are specialty is custom design. So even down to the sprinkles, uh, we are custom designing our kit. So super fun. Um, you also have very important, you have three frosting colors. Okay, these are, this is royal icing. And royal icing is made with powdered sugar, powdered egg whites, and water. So you're gonna see me kind of mix up the bag a little bit before I get started. What you're gonna to wanna to do is remix that water into the mixture. It's very, very natural when the water separates from the more the, the royal icing because when it's not in use, it just separates. So there's nothing wrong with your frosting, but you do wanna make sure that all your bags are mixed up really well. So if you see any dark shadings, um, you just wanna make sure that you mix it up before we start. And you don't have to do this the whole time we're decorating, just at the beginning, because you can see a little bit of the dark shadow and the white. Um, we just wanna get that mixed up, okay? All right. So I'm gonna start with my yellow. You can start with whatever color you want, but I'm gonna teach you about outlining and flooding. And then we're gonna add some detail here on our cookies. So these decorating bags, and again, if you have any questions, um, you know, just chime in. You're never interrupting me. Um, one personal note, my grandmother used to call me a radio. So I do talk a lot. <laughs> I do talk fast. I was also an event coordinator. So that just comes with my passion. But uh, please, uh, so, you know, you're never interrupting me if you have a question, okay, or a comment. So these decorating bags are great because they're really pliable and there's a single seam on here. So what we're gonna do is take our scissors and go straight across to trim that bag and just take a little bit off like the size of a sharpened pencil. 
You don't want to go too big too fast because you, with these tipless bags is what they're called. You can only go bigger. You obviously can't go smaller. So a lot of cookie decorators and cake decorators will use these metal tips and couplers. Well, we don't need these today. And I've actually become very, very comfortable and very um, happy with these tipless bags. So before I start decorating, I want just kind of take a look to see how I'm holding the bag. And you want the majority of the frosting in the palm of your hands and your fingers are applying pressure and your thumb is just kind of hanging out here. Before I go to the cookie, I am going to actually come here on my paper. Look at that big air bubble. When we fill these bags, there's a little bit of an air bubble in there. So you want to just make a couple, couple stripes just to make sure that that air bubble is out of that bag, okay? How are we doing so far? Good, all right. So for piping or what's called outlining, and that's really two techniques that, that decorators do is uh, outlining or piping. I see a lot of people touch down on the cookie and they're dragging the frosting. And what you really wanna do is touch down, but then lift up. And you can see that I'm completely controlling exactly where that line is going. You can see the frosting is coming out very smooth and slowly. So that is the trick to getting a nice smooth line. So I'm gonna start on one side of the carrot and go all the way around. So I'm lifting up and I'm just letting the frosting fall. I'm looking ahead and if I want, I can stop here, kind of take a breath. <laughs> Some people tend to hold their breath when they're piping or outlining. And once you get pretty savvy, you can just go all the way around the cookie. So you're gonna see me pinch the end of the bag quite often. I do that because royal icing dries in the air. So we'll come back to this a little later and you're gonna see how it crusts over. So I just like to wipe that off, just get a nice clean tip before I get back to the cookie. So touch down, lift up. I'm applying a very smooth amount of pressure. And when I get close to my destination, I go closer to the cookie. So outlining and piping is not always required for every design, but a lot of cookie decorators do that. And I like to do that because it gives it a nice clean finish. And it also, when you flood it or fill it, it kind of holds all, it holds everything really tidy inside. All right. So hopefully you were able to trim your bag and you went ahead and outlined your carrot. But again, you can start on any cookie that you like without making a bigger hole. I'm just going to start filling or flooding. The only difference I'm doing is I'm putting a lot more pressure so that you can see a lot more frosting is coming out. So these tipless bags are really nice because you can vary the size of the line you're making just by putting more pressure. Now, if you feel like your hand is cramping a little bit, um, you can make your hole a little bit bigger. And then if you wanna make a smaller line, just give a little bit less pressure. So I feel my, my hand cramping just a little bit. Um, I've been decorating a lot. So, and I'm also pretty comfortable with a larger hole. So I'm just gonna go a little smaller. Now be mindful where those little pieces of plastic go. Um, you don't want them getting mixed up in your sprinkles. So now with flooding, um, you can see that I'm being very generous with the frosting and I'm not necessarily overlapping, but I'm not leaving any big gaps at all. And you're probably also noticing that the, the frosting may not completely flatten out, but don't worry because as soon as I'm finished flooding, we're gonna just give this a little tap and a little shake to be able to flatten it out. And the reason why you need to do that is um, the consistency of frosting that I have in these decorating bags, I like to call a hybrid. So it's not, not super thick where you can make something like these. This was really thick frosting. And it's not soupy where it's gonna be really frustrating and go over the side. But now you can see it's a little bumpy, but if I just give it a little bit of a tap and a little shake, um, you can see that it flattens out nicely, okay? Um, like I said, this, this consistency is really nice and I use it a lot for decorating. Um, and it saves time because you don't need to have multiple bags. I mean, look what we're making. We have literally three bags, one consistency, and we're able to make all these different textures on here. So we'll get to those in a moment. Okay. All right. Well, I cannot wait to see what you guys are creating. So I'm going to finish up this carrot and then we're going to see pretty quick to see if anyone wants to share. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get my other bags ready. And again, just trimming straight across. Let me get my white ready. And when you're not using these bags, you can just pinch the top and then flip it over. But again, the consistency is nice where it's not going to spill out. Again, I wanna see those little air bubbles come out pretty quickly. That's an awfully small line. So I wanna make a little bit bigger hole. And again, it's better to go 
real small. Get that little air bubble out. Maybe one a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna make some polka dots on this carrot. Okay. So then, you know, making polka dots, it seems probably really simple and easy, but I see a lot of people hold the piping bag on a side. And so they squeeze and then they get more of like a teardrop. If that's what you're going for, great, or an oval. The key to making perfect polka dots is just keep your piping bag straight up. And sometimes if you feel your hand is shaking, I'm a one-handed piper. <laughs> I don't know why every time I say that, it makes me laugh. But if you find that your hand is shaking a little bit, just use your other hand to study it. But for some reason, I can pipe with one hand, but when I do polka dots, I do like to have my hand, other hand just kind of keeping it steady. And so I can make a nice round polka dot. So now I'm just randomly adding some little polka dots to my cookie and no particular you know, pattern of any sort, but I like to have them a little random. You can make as many as you want. Oh, maybe one more there and one more there. <laughs> okay, one more there. <laughs> it's kind of like when you make chocolate chip cookies and you're like, oh, just a few more chocolate chips. Why not, right? Okay, one more there. <laughs> so now you can see I just added some really uh, cute polka dots. Um, always jazzes up a cookie really simply. Um, very, very sweet. And, um, you know, when I pull the cookie on the side to show you, I can see the frosting moving a little bit. So it's very important to keep your cookies flat while they're drying. So just be aware of that. Okay, um, now what I'm gonna do is I've got some great green sugar here. I think mine's mixed in with some little non perils. Uh, you might have some um, little like chunky sugar like uh, sugar and that's actually graham crackers. So, um, you know, that's really fun to be able to accent your little leaf up here. So what I'm gonna do is take my white, I'm gonna just test my bag here, get those air bubbles out. And rather than cover the whole leaf here, I'm just gonna make little petals, three little petals on the top up here. Again, my piping technique, I touch down, I pick up, and almost like you're making a flower petal. I'm just gonna do three of them. And the reason I like doing that, I like showing cookie because it just shows, you know, the, the design just becomes a little bit more um, whimsical when you don't follow the exact shape of the cookie. I don't know, it just adds a little bit of um, a little bit more art, art, artistry, if you will. So I'm gonna flood this with my white. So I'm filling it, I'm overfilling a little bit so it gets nice and puffy. And then if I want, I can take some of my green sugar. You can use the back of your paintbrush here as a little nice little tool to separate some of your, um, some of your sugars if you want, if you've got them all mixed up. So if you want just a specific um, group of sugar. I'm just going to add some green and some little non perils on there just to give it a little bit of a little bit of color. And I don't even mind these little black jimmies on there because what's really nice is it just adds a pop of color on the top of my leaf up there. So very, very fun. Um, your jelly beans. So be very careful here because um, children and adults <laughs> be careful with your scissors, but they're a little slippery, but I do actually like cutting um, the, and you can use a butter knife too, but I like cutting my jelly beans in half and in little quarters. And what we'll see what I'm going to use well, a piece of the jelly bean for the little chick's nose. But I do like, um, using the jelly beans as little accent. It's a sweet surprise when you bite into that cookie and then you've got that little jelly bean. It's so delicious. So I'm just going to add a little purple jelly bean here on the side. Um, I cut it in half so it's it's still elevated off the cookie, but look how cute that is. It just adds a little, it's almost like you're bedazzling your, <laughs> your carrot here. And then um, I can make a little, I could take another carrot if I want, or you can make, see, I made these little leaflets here um, and added a couple of non perils just to make almost like a little extra bouquet of um, um, little, like a little bit of, uh, basically a bouquet, a bouquet of candies here in the corner. And you can use your little back of the paintbrush here to kind of move your non perils around. And then I'm going to take my pink and do that polka dot, but then I'm going to release and make a little leaflet. So polka dot and a little leaflet. If you want to add a little bit of something on there. And then I do like this final little touch here. I like this little squiggly line going all the way down that carrot. It's just so cute. So I'm going to take my white and I'm going to make sure I have a, not a huge hole, but you know, a little bit bigger hole. I don't want to go too big, but I want a nice big, bold line. 
And to do something like this, you need to be very intentional. So kind of look ahead on where you're going, trust that you're going to get there all the way, follow the shape of the cookie. So you can even practice over here if you want to kind of just get the rhythm. But look, I'm not even moving my wrist. I'm just moving my entire arm is going around to make these circles. So I'm just going to start at one end here and just, just go all the way down to the bottom of the cookie. See, just a, like a, an extra little design that just adds a little bit something. I disturbed one of my little polka dots here, so I can just correct it there if I want. Um, and you know, and I have to say, don't worry about the little imperfections. Um, I have been known to be a cookie snob, and that's fine. <laughs> I don't mind having that title because you know, quality is important in presentation. But for home bakers, and when you're baking for family and friends and decorating, those little imperfections are your signature. So don't worry about too much correcting, um, because like I said, there's no wrong way to decorate a cookie. And honestly, when you, if you choose to share your cookies, and let's say you have your cookies dry, and you put them in a sweet little bag, even a single cookie with a bag and a ribbon, and you know, this cookie's not even perfect, you can see. They are just going to love the fact that you took some time and made them a cookie, handmade a cookie for them. So please give yourself some grace. I've been decorating a long time and I'm still learning, um, but really it's, it's really just to have some fun and, and have a sweet treat in the end. So, so there is the carrot. Um, and then I have a question. Yeah, please. How long does it take for the cookies to typically dry? For where yeah, you thank you. Them? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the royal icing takes a long time. So uh, several hours, minimally, ideally, and it's going to sound crazy. You want to leave your cookies out overnight. I know that sounds like a long time for it to be completely dry where you can stack them and bag them and box them and even ship them off. So, you know, but don't worry because the, the moisture and the frosting will uh, keep the cookie moist. So they're not going to dry out and it's a very buttery cookie too. So, but yeah, it sounds crazy, but for several hours and it will be deceiving because after about three or four hours, it looks like it's dry, but you can easily punch your finger right through it. So, because it's pretty thick, but I'm going to show you, um, I'll show you one design here real quick. This, this little Easter egg here, or this carrot that I made, I actually brushed the frosting off mostly something like this with a border and with a little bit of frosting, this will dry within two hours easily. So it's just when you have the whole cookie covered in frosting, that's gonna take several hours. This one will dry much, much faster uh, because, and I love this technique here. Um, I can show you that really, really fast here before we move on to the other cookie, but it's so pretty. And um, how I did that was um, you just take a little bit of frosting. I'm gonna use the brush side and you literally just brush on the cookie, the color. And I just think this is such a fun um, technique. And I know you're out there, but there's some people that don't like a lot of frosting. Who are you people? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. But no, really, if you're not a huge fan of a lot of frosting, maybe you're watching your calories. I totally get that because I am too. But this is great because you get a little flavor of the frosting but you're not getting that full bite and you also make a beautiful backdrop. So I'm just at this point, I'm just alternating my colors. And here's what's really fun too, is over here, you can make your own, like another color just by mixing two of the colors together. So I can take my pink and my yellow and it should make it like a nice little orangey pink. So I'm just mixing this together and then I can add and so look at that, I've got a little bit of orange now, just to kind of show you this other technique here. But look how cool that is, because now I just brought in, and this lighting is awesome, but sometimes it's a little bit bright, but you can see now it's a little bit of orange down here. Um, so that's a really fun, um, a fun way to decorate a cookie. It makes a great backdrop. So I'm not gonna go all the way through with this cookie, but just to show you this brush technique is really, really fun. Um, here's one more sample of that. We made this uh, party hat for a birthday party. And so you can see it's just a really fun where you can add the detail up on top. And it just is just so wonderful. And still you get a bite of the frosting here, but, and um, you can see the thickness of the cookie too. I think a lot of people are like, oh, that's a lot of frosting, but you know, look at this cookie. Look how thick that cookie is still. So we really, you know, it's, it's more, still more cookie than frosting. <laughs> yeah, great question. Thank you for that. Thank so I'm going to put my carrot over there, put that one over there for inspiration. And I think we're going to go, if we're ready, does anyone, first of all, does anyone want to show what they've made? Do they have something to show? Elizabeth. Ooh, nice job. 
Yeah, so go ahead, just put up your um, cookie to the camera if you want to show. Or you feel free to mm -hmm. unmute Natalie. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to. Oh, Angie. Nice. I see Jack and team. Those look amazing. Good job. Oh, Elizabeth, I like yours when you left some space in between. So kind of made, yeah, you've got some cookie in the background, which is great. Nancy, nice job. Thank you for sharing. Those look amazing. Okay, I have to ask, has anyone, um, has anyone tasted a cookie yet? Anybody nibbled on a cookie yet? <laughs> Okay, so now let's go on to, I have to show you this great little bunny rabbit. It's just so adorable. And I really excited and kind of jazzed about this, uh, the fur around. So I want to show you how we did that, how I did that. And I'm going to use the brush side. Again, such a cute, such a simple design, but look how his face just like pops. And so I also have this one here and I did two different things here. So this one, I literally just outlined, flooded the whole thing, let it dry a little bit, and then added the accents up on top of the white. This one, I did some texture, I added the pink, and then I flooded it. So this is the one I'm going to do. It's just super cute. And you should have some of these little, uh, like I said, these little black royal icing um, pieces, but don't worry because if you don't have little whiskers, which I'm sure you do, but if you don't, you can also, I'm going to do one with just the white frosting to make his whiskers too. So I can show that to you. But yeah, let me show you how I made this fur. Really, you know, maybe obvious, may not be, but it's really kind of easy when you, when you see it broken down. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I have lots of cookies showing. I'm gonna follow the shape of the cookie and I'm gonna make sure I have a, a little bit bigger um, hole with my white just to ease the, the piping because I want a, a much thicker line now for piping. So look how far I'm going in off the cookie. So I'm leaving a lot of cookies showing. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're gonna be brushing outward. And so I went around once, but you can see, look how lot, almost like a almost like a half an inch I'm leaving, okay? So now I'm going to go over it again. I'm going to give it a big push here. And don't worry about this line being really super straight because we're going to be disturbing it anyway. So a good dollop of frosting. So that's your first step. So it doesn't look like much, but we're going to transform this into this. <laughs> okay. All right. So now brush off your brush if you've used it. You want to take off any of that coloring you had on there because you want to keep it a true white bunny. All I'm doing is I'm holding the brush on this side. So the flat side, not this way, but this way. And now I'm carefully just pulling. Just, that's all I'm doing is I'm just pulling some of that frosting back. And before your eyes, it looks like a furry bunny. So you can see, I'm trying to keep that inner line. Um, so if you feel like you're disturbing the whole line, you can add some more frosting, but look how fun that is. And really simple, but very impressive technique. So trust me, if you make these for Easter and share them with your family and friends, they're going to be like, wow, did you take a class? <laughs> you must have had a really good teacher show you that cool technique. <laughs> so really fun. And that so my, my, frosting, my, my frosting is, is kind of, I don't know, chunky in the... <laughs> <laughs> and the and the white outline is coming out. It's not looking so feathery. What 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 can we do? Oh sure. What you want to do the first thing is mix it up. So it okay. probably is not mixed. It so pinch the top and make, give it a good mix because the white will settle um, for whatever reason. Like when you add color gels, they all you know it's like it's science right here. This is science. <laughs> But um, with the white, the white will settle. And so if it settles too much, it can feel a little gummy or it feels thick. Just give it a good mix. Just give it a good mix. Now, if you're piping and you feel like there's something stuck, it could be just be a granulator piece of sugar, a granular piece of sugar. So just pinch it carefully. Um, but I think it might just not be mixed all the way is my guess. So give it a good, good mix. Okay, thank you. And see if that works, yeah. Okay. So then you can see I went all the way around the cookie and now I have that really great looking furry bunny. So give that a try. And then before I flood it, I'm gonna take my pink and I'm not necessarily going to outline. I'm just going to make, I'm just gonna do one continuous motion of just kind of outlining and then flooding it right away to make a little ear 
like the inside of his ear here. So, and if you're not really sure where you want to go, again, the back of this brush is just a great tool. You can always carefully just kind of scratch uh, where you want to go and you're actually marking up the cookie. Uh, that's one way to do it. Otherwise, just eyeball it. And if they're both not exactly the same on both sides, it's not, not a big deal. Again, keep in mind if they're handmade. So I'm just making a little bit of a, a very thin, like, um, oblong or like an oval shape here, just in the corner on, on both sides of the ear. So this is just my little pink. And yes, you could flood this white and then put the pink on top. I just kind of like how the pink sinks in a little bit. So when I put my finger over this, the, the pink is just sunk in just a little bit and then it gets nice and puffy with the white. So, um, and this is a big cookie. So um, you will probably use quite a bit of the white, but don't worry because with your other cookies, you can always interchange the colors, but you should, you, in the end, you really should, even with the eight cookies have leftover frosting, but um, if you don't, yeah, use it all up. All right, well, thank you for the nice comments. Someone said the cookies are amazing. They're looking good. Hopefully they're tasting delicious if you haven't tasted it already. Um, this is a sugar cookie with a vanilla royal icing, as I mentioned, the royal icing. But, um, you know, we don't add any, you know, flavors uh, generally to our icing. We just like that classic vanilla. Um, we do seasonally. So I can tell you that if you ever do want to flavor your icing, a really easy, simple way to do that is just add some uh, natural fruit flavors. Um, you can always puree or you can add extracts, uh, even lemon zest. Um, I just came out with a, you know, when life gives you lemon, make lemonade cookie decorating kit. And I'm super excited about it because I'm adding lemon zest to the icing and I've got lemon candies. And so, but it's just super subtle. So I don't often, you know, flavor the cookie. It's in the icing that you can just give a nice little flavor. So you can add some cocoa, you can add coffee, espresso. Um, oh my gosh, mint, anything you want just to flavor up if you want the cookies. So now you can see, I just flooded that bunny, um, went around carefully and you can see now the pink is kind of almost not behind, but it's, it's a little bit lower than my white because I puffed up around the white up on top there. Okay. Yeah, I know the bunny has been really popular because it's so fun to use these little royal icing accents. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put his little eyes on there. Um, one of the tools I'm not using that I said I wouldn't use though, I have to show you though, is this little tweezers. <laughs> I have kind of large hands, so I am missing my tweezers right now, but I'm not gonna use it. I promised, I promised you I wasn't gonna use any of my tools. But I love showing these little tools like this one and this little cookie scribe it's called. It's basically a glorified toothpick. Um, right now we're using the back of the paintbrush, but it is nice, a tool because it's very thin, but honestly toothpicks work too. But these are my two most favorite tools that I use all the time. And, um, but as you can see, you don't need a lot of fancy tools to decorate beautiful cookies. And I love this as, you know, for families and, you know, to inspire people uh, to make cookies at home, to decorate at home, because it's really a low investment activity. You don't need to spend a lot um, to make really cute cookies. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is his little nose and basically it's an upside down triangle. So you're just gonna make an upside down triangle for his little, you know, little uh, bunny nose there. So just right between his eyes, you can make it as big as you want. So here's where all the little accents are coming in and you could use a little non peril There's little, um, little uh, white jimmies too you could use. Um, and then I do have some of these little uh, black but since I did black whiskers here, I'm just going to show you if I let this dry just a little bit, I can use the white to make his whiskers. Um, so I'll do that in a moment here. I'm just going to finish his little face here. I'm going to go now. The next step is just make a little bit of line. I'm barely pushing, barely pushing because, you know, I flooded with the pink, but I want a very, very little line for his little, um, his little nose mouth right there. So I'm just going to push very carefully just to make a very skinny line. almost like a, just a half smile, kind of a half curve. And even if he's not perfectly straight, you can see he's almost like, hmm. <laughs> so you don't have to be perfectly straight. It's that little expression there. Um, I am gonna take two of my little, um, see if I can do this. Cause like I said, my hands are really big, but these little tiny, I, I like the eyebrows. So I'm gonna give him two little tiny eyebrows with the little black whiskers or little black royal icing. 
And I might change his expression just by how these little icing, um, how these little <laughs> things land. Oh, <laughs> okay. I just said, oh, that, oh, see, he looks angry, <laughs> but no fear. Watch this. I'm going to take the back of my paintbrush very, very carefully. And I'm just going to move, move his, <laughs> I'm going to make him a little happier here. Okay, so that's a little better. Now he's not so angry. <laughs> See, I fixed him. So there's always, there's always, I always say when I used to work at the university and my team would come and say, oh my gosh, we have a major, major problem. We have this whatever. And I said, okay, well, look, there's no problems, just opportunities, <laughs> right? Just opportunities. And I always say, no matter what, when something doesn't quite go right, in the end, always something positive comes out of it. So anyway. <laughs> So yes, I was able to fix him and now he's a happy bunny. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I used to always tell my staff too, Hey, if you made, if you had a problem or you made a mistake, believe me, I've made the same one and probably made it more than once. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to go on top. This white is still not completely dry, but I'm going to go ahead and just add some little white whiskers and it should stay up on top because this icing dries pretty fast. So again, a very, very smooth, small push of frosting. And I'm just gonna add some white whiskers. I can show you two variations of, so now you can see, and it should stay up. It might, you know, because I didn't wait a long time, but I think it still will stay. And if it doesn't, when we're done with the last two cookies and I see that it didn't stay, like it blended, I'll just add more stripes. And then you'll be able to see his whiskers kind of exaggerated, but he looks pretty cute. It's pretty good. Oh, and I can't resist. We've got these great little carrots here. I think he's hungry. So I'm just gonna add a little carrot right there, right in the icing so that he's eating a carrot. <laughs> he's hungry. <clears throat> so super fun. And again, I love these little transfers because they've got a pop of color and it just really just brightens up that cookie design. Um, you can see, I mean, look at no carrot, carrot. I mean, which one would you want? Which one would you pull off the table? I think this one. <laughs> That tiny, tiny little detail. Okay. Put that one aside. All right, well, let's take a moment. Do you want to unmute yourself? I know we've got a couple more cookies here, but feel free to show and we can spotlight a few here. So if you want to show a cookie, let's see. Okay, hold on, Jack. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the spotlight. Let's see that up close. Oh my gosh, those look amazing. I spotlight them up. Very cute. Nice job. You guys were busy, busy. I love the yellow ears. You're welcome. Look at the carrots. Oh my word. Those look wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. What are your names? Jack and Luke. Hello, Jack and Luke. Nice to see you. Thanks for decorating with us. Welcome. You're doing a good job. Are you going to share those cookies? Or you're going to eat them up all yourself? Uh, probably tomorrow we're going to share them. Oh, that is so sweet. We may eat Very one. Nice. Well, have a happy Easter. Very nice job. You too. Thank you. Yes. Okay, let's see. Anyone else want to show? Who's going to I think we oh, have Elizabeth. I think Sarah wanted to share too. Oh, okay, Sarah, let's go over to Sarah. Spotlight, there we go. Hello, Sarah. Is that the right Sarah? Hi. 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 Let's see what, you, what, what you've created so far. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love the big pink ears, yes. Nicely done. So cute. And then this is my carrot. Very nice. Good job. So your fellow baker there, does he want something? He does he want to show something that he's made? Show something. Do you want to show one? Go ahead, you can show one. And what are your names? Uh, I'm Julia and he's Kai. Hello. Do you want to show one? one up? Go ahead, you hold it up. Let's see what you made. Oh, that's wonderful. Very cute. The jelly beans are going to be a delicious bite. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. 
All right, I'm gonna go on to the next cookie. So let me go ahead and spotlight again. We've got two more to do, and I'm gonna put them side by side just so you can see if you want to move forward with your decorating here. It's amazing how time goes by so quickly, but I wanna make sure I get through um, these two little guys here. So we've got our little baby chick and our little baby bunny. And, and so as you're decorating, so if you could hang on um, until the end, we'd love to take a large screenshot of everybody's favorite cookie. So, and be sure to snap some pictures before you gobble them up. Um, your invitation did mention um, to share your creations and tag uh, the university. So um, SHU alumni on social media, and I'd love if you were to tag Edible Impressions so we can kind of see what you guys have all created. So yeah, be sure to take pictures before you gobble them up. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'll work on this chick over here and I'm gonna outline the little eggshell, but I am gonna show you this one very quickly because it's a really cool technique. So do you see how that, that feathering technique with the lines, I'm gonna show you how, how easy that is to do. So I'll leave that here just for inspiration. So I'm going to go ahead and just outline this eggshell here and I could just make, you know, follow whatever. You know, I kind of just went on my own here, but just made a broken eggshell, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that with white just so I can have the color stand out. So I'm going to fill with white. So, and I'm going to go ahead and just make that hole a little bigger just so it floods a little faster. So I'm being very generous. And if for some reason, if you find that your cookies are not flattening out, nine times out of 10 is you're not putting enough frosting. So just add a little bit extra dollop and then kind of tap it and shake it. And I guarantee you it will, will get flat and very puffy. So I'm gonna take my pink and I'm just gonna make stripes on the bottom of that eggshell with the red, with the pink, excuse me, the pink and the white or the, the yellow, excuse me. I get all excited about this design because it's so fun. So like this, it is super cute as is, okay? But I'm gonna make this little textured lines here. So I'm gonna take the back of the paintbrush and I'm going to just hold my paintbrush on a very slight angle and just barely disturb the yellow and pink lines. So I don't wanna necessarily go down all the way to the cookie and scrape the cookie, just very gently on the top of the frosting, the very top layer. And so you're just wiping off and I'm wiping off after each time just so I don't blend the colors too much. And you can see that was the first pass. Turn it upside down and do the same thing. So now I'm just doing a second swipe and you can see how adorable that is. See that? Just to make that little cute little texture if you're looking for something like that. Okay. So I told you about the jelly beans earlier. <clears throat> I'm going to take my orange jelly bean or whatever color you want. Again, be very careful cutting these, uh, but I'm going to just make a very small triangle. And this is going to be the beak. <laughs> it's going to be my little chick's beak. And again, that'd be a little nice little delicious bite. So you can see this one, I did some frosting. And then this one is actually a piece of jelly bean I put for his nose. So, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just outline the chick. I'm gonna leave his beak just cookie. So you can see I did one continuous motion of outlining and then flooding right away. Should have some extra eyeballs. And then I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna reinforce this little piece of jelly bean for his nose. <laughs> I just think that is so fun that, you know, unexpected little accent on that cookie, <laughs> that little jelly bean beak. And then you should have some really colorful and little non perils. Um, you can add a little whimsical line if you want. Again, your piping technique is just making some swirlies if you want to add from one end to the other. to add a little bit of something. <clears throat> and actually what's really fun is you could even take these jelly beans and make a small little bouquet with the different colors. Almost make a little flower, if you will. So 
that's a little flower. So possibilities are endless, but it just, I love that flash of color just to show you that there. <clears throat> you know, and speaking of sprinkles, um, you can see I've kind of have them all over, but you would be surprised on how many sprinkles are just in your kitchen cabinet. So, you know, get creative and um, you can, I'm sure right now in your kitchen cupboard, you have cereal, maybe mini chocolate chips. You might have some hard candy that you can crush. Um, there's so many different uh, options for sprinkles out there that you don't have to buy the store-bought necessarily. And even the sugar, we make our own color sugar here and we just get the sanding sugar. They come in a couple of different sizes, but just a little color gel and you can make any color you want. So it's really fun to, to be, um, you know, to, to be creative with your sprinkles. You don't always have to just store, store, buy, store buy them. Okay, and then the last one I want to show you is just this little bunny, and this one is hard to see on the pink and the yellow, but what I'm going to do here, this is more of an advanced technique, but I'll just take with one, one minute we have left here uh, before we gather again as a group is um, this beautiful little rose here. So really quick, I'm just going to outline, um, flood this one. I'll do one continuous motion. Um, you can see how fast I can decorate, but continue decorating, and then we will you know, prepare yourselves because we'll take a group picture if we can. That would be awesome. And then I'll take any questions too while I'm doing this one. Do you have any questions or comments? Annette, what's been your favorite shape cookie to decorate? Oh, my favorite shape. Oh, that's so hard. Um, you know, I have to say <clears throat> when you talk about a shape, it's not necessarily a cookie shape. It's more of a technique but I've just recently been getting into the 3D design. So three-dimensional meaning, um, like for Valentine's day, I made this uh, letter, it was three pieces and there was candy inside. So making, um, you know, uh, three-dimensional. So, oh boy, there's so many shapes. I mean, we have thousands and thousands of cookie cutters and I'm so glad you mentioned that because look at this, we use 3D technology printing. So we make all our own cookie cutters here at Edible Impressions and any size, any shape. Um, so in, I made this one a strawberry, a more sturdy strawberry for my chocolate lovers kit. So it is fantastic. So it's so hard to pick one. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's going to be the customization. I love it when we create a new design for someone that's unique just to them. Like the American Heart Association, they have a very specific red dress. So we have that cookie cutter and we only use that cookie cutter for them. The brewers, um, you know, all these different companies. And I love that because it's unique to them and them only. So I think those are my favorite shapes is where we can get really creative. Um, and then it just becomes their, their design. So. Well, Natalie, we might have to commission a SHU cookie cutter. Yes. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> yes. In fact, I, I work very closely. Marquette is of course my, you know, uh, my Marquette family, because I was there for so long, but they are one of my clients and um, we do a lot of cookies for them for their admission tours. Yeah. So like when they have families come and then they come in, they give them a takeaway cookie. And so we've got a, an, an MU shape and then we do their logo and then sometimes we mix it up seasonally. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun and people just love it because it's a great, nice little takeaway. It's a nice little thing to say thank you. And um, it's memorable. It's sweet. <laughs> So now what I'm doing is making that cute little rose. I just made a big um, kind of oval and I know I'm rushing through this one because we don't have a lot more time. I'm good to stay a little later, but I just wanna be very mindful of your time. So on the top of that letter G, it's amazing that this is gonna turn into this. I always love showing the before and after. <laughs> so now I'm gonna just uh, disturb the top of the G up here, wipe it off, disturb the bottom on the bottom just a couple of times. And look at that, a couple of brush strokes and now it looks like a rose. And so I just put two little, so isn't that pretty? Just a really, I mean, it takes a little bit of practice but when you do two tones, doesn't that look like a rose? Just from those few, just brush strokes. So, okay. So now just this and this, I wanna grab my, <clears throat> presentation plate. Before I do that, I think I'll just give them a nice little, little dollop of right in the center here, his cottontail, if you will. A little bouquet of non-perils and white jimmies. Okay. 
So that's like the back of the bunny. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring in the carrot. I'm gonna bring in our little chick and our other carrot for inspiration. And of course our hero of the plate here, our bunny. And then our little baby bunny. So these are, except for this one, um, this was the sample, but look at those beautiful Easter cookies. There you go. Okay, so I open the floor up for questions. I know a few people have their video on, but this would be the time to show your video if you're not too shy. If you want to take a screenshot, we'd love to see. You know, it's Saturday morning and I get it. So if you don't want to show your face, just put your cookie right in front of your face. <laughs> or just give us a thumbs up. So, so yeah, we'll wait just a moment here for people to come on. If they want to pick a cookie, would love that. So thank you for the families that are out there. I see some on screen already. Get these in the shot. So I will take a screenshot. Thank you so much. All right, Elizabeth, thank you for showing your video. Appreciate that. Oh my God, they look amazing. Okay, I'm gonna call out Madison, Madison Gibbs. You have a cookies to show? Alex, Elizabeth. I'm gonna to count to 10. All right. Um, my Madison's gotta show her cookies. They're oh, out there hard right. at thank work. You, she's hiding. Everybody, we're almost there. Okay, Kaylee, Jen, Sonia, Charles. <laughs> All right, I'm impressed. Look at how many people. This is amazing. Okay, I'm going to count to five and we're going to take a picture. So Alex, you ready? Alex P. Thank you, Kaylee. Okay, look, everybody's coming out. I love it. All right, ready? I'm going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Got it. Amazing. Give yourself a round of applause. That was awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing. I really do. Um, we'll make sure to share that with uh, Todd Happy and Easter. Natalie and Alexa. So thank you so much. But yeah, Natalie, feel free to take over if you'd like to, any closing remarks. Yes, thank you. And Annette, I just wanted to, to really sincerely thank you for this today. This was a lot of fun. I know that we have families from near and far that tuned in for this. So it was a great way to spend the Saturday morning before Easter. Yes. Um, and we are wishing all of you a very, very happy Easter. I hope that you enjoy your time with your family. Um, as Annette um, did plug earlier, um, please feel free to tag us in, on social media. We would love to see your final cookies. Um, make sure you snap them before you try them so we can see the full things. Um, <laughs> And as always, um, be on the lookout for more fun and exciting events that we have coming up in the next couple of months. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Annette. Take care. Enjoy. Thank you.